Hello everyone, this is Pastor Femi Akujeno, founder of Lives on Television. I have with me Gerald Wallins, uh, a Christian, a minister, an actor, and many other things. Uh, I'm going to have you listen and get to hear his heart and get to know about him and what God is doing through him. Uh, he was formerly uh, an actor with the Holy Land Experience uh, with TBN and uh, I'm really excited uh, to be able to talk with him today and you know get to know more about what he does for the Kingdom of God. Uh, so Gerald why don't you you know introduce yourself to our viewers. Yeah. Well it's great to be here, great opportunity and I love New York. I'm here in New York City and it's just been wonderful. I, um, I, uh, I was telling Pastor that Sometimes I don't know what to call myself, except I'm a, first of all a Christian. Second of all, I love to minister. God's called me uh, to minister through the arts and through the Word of God, and through uh, song and, and dance and whatever else He wants to use me. But to be here with you and to share on television is truly my heart because I believe in the power of the media, the power of the visual arts, um, the power to get the message out. You know what comes to me most, Pastor, is especially when you want to reach somebody who's got a hard heart That's right. or a young person who's bombarded with media and bombarded with all these things there's no better way to reach them than through a production or through television because you know when you're sitting on your couch and you're turning channels mm -hmm. you know and something pops up there's no you can't really put a wall up to that That's right. because nobody's preaching at you or directly to you you're just watching a box That's watching right. a television you know so it can kind of sneak in there in a good way you know, I, I've heard numerous stories about people who are going to commit suicide, and they're flipping channels, and they see a minister or something, somebody crying, somebody worshiping a play, uh, and they get born again, get transformed. Mm -hmm. So that's why I love being part of the arts, part of television. Great. What do you say to uh, pastors that are not making use of media? Uh, I mean, media, it, it's very important, as you and I know, but there's, there's some pastors that have not seen it. Amen. What do you say to them? I'm, I'm really glad you asked that. I guess all we can do is, for number one, all of our job is to obey the Lord, obey the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads every leader of every flock, and hopefully we're all listening. But nine times out of ten, there's an opportunity to use ministry and, and through media. Um, there's radio, there's internet, there's television, there's so many. Uh, I mean, just to videotape your services, your, your art specials, your dance specials, anything that you've got, anything that has an anointing on it, capture it. And it can be spread throughout the world. I know numerous testimonies when I was with Benny Hinn Media Ministries. I was with him in his church for six years. Okay. And all the stories we would see when he was first getting going in the... In the uh, uh, start and go throughout the world. He w we would do a, a Sunday night healing service. And, you know, they videotaped every service. Um, sometimes they'd be on TBN, sometimes not. But somebody buy a video. That's right. They would go to visit their family in Italy or, or Spain or, or Europe, Africa, mm -hmm. wherever. And that person would copy the video. And that person would copy the video. And he'd find out, he'd get testimonies from halfway around the world of somebody who watched the video copy of a video copy of a video copy and they got healed. Hmm. So that the anointing, the presence of God is captured That's right. on the truth, the Word of God, right? That's right? And the presence of the Holy Spirit. We don't understand how all that happens That's exactly, right. but we know it works. That's right. And so I just, I, I just want to passionately, passionately encourage you to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, to obey Him in using the arts. And when it comes to the technology, I guarantee you the Lord will pay the bill. That's right. You know, there's, I always say this to pastors when I'm ministering. I say there's, there's three things main things I think that the Lord will pay the bill if you do. Number one is salvation, evangelism. You, pay, you, you evangelize and win souls, he's going to pay the bill. That's right. You take care of your children, you know, the widows and the orphans, right? That's right. You have children's programs taking care of the, of the poor and all that, and, and the drug addicts, those on the streets, you take care of the needy, he's going to pay the bill. Number three, media, technology. He will pay the bill because God deserves excellence. God That's deserves right. excellence. And, and we've got to we deserve it more than the world does, right? That's right? We should have the best. That's right. So you have faith and invest in that equipment, and God will pay the bill. And just, I'm one of many, but just as myself, I was telling Pastor that I, I have 
uh, years ago in 1994, formed a, a a company called Higher Standard Praise Systems in order to provide equipment for ministries and churches. That's right. And there are many places to do that. But, you know, give your money to the kingdom of God. Don't That's give right. it to the world for your equipment. There's many Christian companies out there. That's right. So, And also for us uh, as a station, we will uh, help you to use media to get the message to souls. Amen. Uh, if you don't know what to do, how to do it, how to set up a media ministry, you can reach out to us, you know, Live Zone TV. Uh, you could go to our website and you can contact us, and That's we will wonderful. walk you through it. And we will have capability to do live broadcast right from our studio, where you don't need to own a camera, you don't need to have a, a production team. You can just come to our studio and you'll be able to broadcast live from our studio. Now, back to you, Gerald. Um, you were with the Holy Land Experience mm -hmm. uh, for three years, and you, you, you were an actor there, and you know, portraying Jesus. Uh, tell me, uh, first of all, how you got that, uh, uh, um, you know, to, to be able to do that, and mm -hmm. also what your experience has, has been mm -hmm. since you, you've been doing that. Uh, it's, a, it's been a really amazing journey. Just all my life, I loved acting and, and, and just everything production, entertainment. And uh, through the years, I always tried every opportunity to do something for the Lord with my talent. So I tried to do a play here, a film here, a TV thing here, whatever opportunity I had. And so um, through the years, people knew me. Uh, for, uh, the first time I ever played Jesus was 1990. Okay. A missions trip to, to uh, Mexico, in Jamaica, right. Jamaica and Mexico. And uh, so um, some people had heard that there was auditions for Holy Land Experience. And, and uh, TBN was running that along the, the screen. And people kept telling me, and I kept getting confirmations from the Lord so much. that so I was like, okay, okay, I'm going to go. You know, so I sent in a video. I was living in Nashville for nine years. And I sent in a video audition, and they asked me to come. And I uh, got to meet Jan Crouch. And... Uh, she approved, felt like the Lord was in it, and uh, uh, just jumped right in there, and it was fantastic. You know, I've been, I've done uh, literally thousands of shows. Uh, I don't even like to use the word show. I call them praise formances. That's right. You know, but uh, there was a, a number of gentlemen there that could play, that are anointed to play Jesus as I was, and we would share the responsibilities. But my main responsibility was the uh, Last Supper reenactment. Okay. I usually did 10 to 12 a day, and... Um, uh, and then also did children's parable shows okay. and things like that. And uh, the experience was priceless. I mean, you can imagine. First of all, the honor to portray Jesus is, is amazing. Um, and it's really something you just can't do. You just can't act like Jesus. You just have to, you know, that's what a Christian is, really. That's a Christian right. is an imitator of Christ, right? That's so right. we're all supposed to imitate Jesus. I just happen to look like the artwork of a lot of the, you know, uh, things through the years. So it's effective. People see me and it just helps them have a, a point of contact, That's right. touch, you know. And it's beautiful because when I would walk in, you know, the, the, the Holy Spirit will anoint you if you're willing. Mm -hmm. And He would put the mantle. I could just feel the mantle of the Lord Jesus come upon me. Mm -hmm. And He's in me you know, by, by the Spirit of God. But He, he told me, He said, it's one part you'll, it's the one, only part you'll ever play That's right. that you don't need to act. Mm. Just let me out. That's right. So I've, I've had to just learn to let go and to just keep filling myself with the Word, keep filling myself with the Lord, mm -hmm. learn about Him, who He is, and be like Him, and He just oozes out of you, That's you know? Right. That's so right. it's not an effort. It's not hard. I mean, you can't do 6,000 communions mm. and, and not get bored without the Holy Spirit anointing you to do that. You know what I mean? That's Especially right. me, because I get bored very easily. Mm. <laughs> I love variety. I love versatility. That's right. So... Um, I really uh, enjoyed the, the experience because, you know, to have a little child come up and hold you and say, Jesus, you know, or a, a woman in tears, mm -hmm. you know, because she's been praying and, and communicating and gone through cancer and talking to Jesus, mm -hmm. but she gets to see a visual representation of the scriptures come alive. That's right. It's so powerful. Now, they know it's not, it, I'm not him. That's right. But they're able to see him in me. Yes. And I, and I could actually feel, you could actually feel the Lord looking through your eyes because mm. I would ask him I said give me your your compassion give me your love give me you know let them see you in me mm -hmm. in my eyes That's right. and I could just literally look around the table sometimes and I could see somebody who I knew didn't know the Lord mm -hmm. and it's like when I looked at them I could see the light go on mm. because he saw the Lord in my eyes and he said this is real mm. you know because it's the Word of God that does it yes yes but 
the anointing of the person delivering the word of God brings the impact, as you know. That's right. Because, you That's know, right. a lot of people preach the gospel and they don't know God. That's right. They really don't. They don't. God will anoint that gospel and he'll touch people for the people's sake. But when you've got the anointing, anointed vessel and the word, mm. it's like a exponential That's right. powerful thing. Awesome. So. Awesome. Awesome. Hello pastors, this is Pastor Femi Akujeno from Live Zone Television. I want to present to you an opportunity to broadcast your programs on Live Zone TV. I'm particularly talking about live broadcasts. With live broadcasts, you can come to our studio in Queens and you can just broadcast your show on Live Zone TV without worrying about having a camera, owning a uh, lighting equipment or having someone to edit the videos for you. With live broadcast, all you have to do is just show up with your message prepared. Stand in our studio or sit in our studio and talk and we will broadcast you live to the world. This is an exciting opportunity for you. If you don't have a team, a production team or a media department, we can be your media department. So I want to encourage you to call us today at 718-787-5268. That is 718-787-5268. We will give you all the information, how to get to us and all that. And you will be able to start to broadcast your programs to the ends of the earth. God bless you. Welcome back. Uh, again, this is Pastor Femi, founder of Live Zone Television, and I'm sitting here with Gerald Wallins, a Christian, a minister, an actor, and we've been talking about his experience at the Holy Land Experience uh, in Orlando, Florida. I, I found out that you have been uh, in New York City for several days now, and you know, you've gone to minister in different mm -hmm. places, including on the streets. I would like to know what has been the reaction of people, you know, as you went to minister on the streets, and uh, what, what has been some of the fun experiences you've had? Wow, uh, it really has been amazing. We went to Times Square Christmas Day, and um, just walking around. I don't have to say much. That's it's right. beautiful. I mean, that's the point. The Lord did it already. You That's know, we right. just have to remind people of him. That's right. And so it was just me and a servant of the Lord, Chaplain Desiree Bernstein, and a couple other Christians at uh, Times Square Church. We, went, we basically went down. Our idea was we were just going to go out and draw people into the Times Square service at 3 o'clock. So it was about 2 o'clock. And um, because of Christmas, they canceled the 3 and the 6. Okay. So I went, we're out there in my outfit, and all of a sudden people start coming up. Where's, is, are they going to have church service? And we were like, and we found out it was canceled. We're like, well, you know what? We're just going to be the church service. We are the church, right? So Pastor De Chaplain Desiree just started preaching a little bit of the word and singing and worshiping. And I just was waving, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Baruch Hatta Atodanai, Eloheinu, talking Hebrew to the Jews and talking uh, praise to the Christians and, you know, loving on the Muslims and just everybody. That's right. And you know what? There was nothing but smiles, laughs. Once in a while you get a little, what is that? They think he's some crazy guy. But you know, everyone affected everyone. Wow. And almost everybody smiled. And, and some people cried. Some people came up and hugged me. Some people said thank you. Uh, people wanted pictures. You mm -hmm. know, even, even people who you would think they're, they're nowhere near God. That's right. You know, teenagers, three teenagers that were high as a kite. They wanted pictures with me. Hmm. Praise God. Amen. You know, that means something inside them is hungry. That's right. You know, they just haven't heard. They just haven't heard. They just don't know. They just haven't had any hope. And, you know, that's what my visit to New York City has been all about. I've been going all over. I've been going to Romani churches, which is uh, our brothers of the chip, gypsy background. Uh, I've gone to four already, going to two more. Wow. Because uh, I met them from Holy Land. I've gone to a Hispanic church, Spanish-speaking church. I've uh, been to a Trinidad church. Um, and just minister to children yes. and it's you know it's all about people from all over the world and everybody relates to Jesus that's right Th that's the thing that brings us all together Wow. and you know the other thing more even more specific is the Last Supper like I was mentioned to you it was one of my most effective ministries is just reenacting the giving of the communion that's because right. everybody has so many different this and that denominations and th but everybody agrees on the word that's that are in the Bible that's right I quote chap uh, John chapter 15, 16, 17, and what can you say? Mm. It's what Jesus said. That's right. Amen? That's right. 
So it's been it's been fabulous. Wow, that's great. That's great. Now you've been to some other countries. Uh, you've been to Trinidad. What, what was that like? Oh, I got to go in June um, to see our brothers and sisters in Trinidad, and it was like 12 days, 14 different meetings, different churches, uh, orphanages, um, schools. I got to go to a public school at their uh, what do you call their uh, their uh, it's like a 15 minutes um, open assembly. That's right. And Jesus got to tell parable stories wow. to kids in high school. Mm. Now, America, it's not that easy to do. We're praying that it's going to be easier to do. But I mean, can you imagine? I got to, and I got to make all the kids laugh. You know, brought the brought one of the teachers up, and he got to beat up on the, you know, the traveler. You know, we did the the parable of the Good Samaritan, and it was yes. just great. But you know, to to dress like this to remind 600 kids in Trinidad about Jesus mm. during school time. I mean, where, where can you do that? Wow. Uh, we got to go out on the beach. We got to go, um, like I said, to different churches. It was, it was fabulous. And the people there were just beautiful. And I'm going back. The Lord spoke to me that it's going to be like a launching pad for me to the Caribbean because I've been invited by many different islands and stuff like that. So I got to go on Channel 5 the last day like this to right. talk about Jesus. And wow. Fantastic. That is awesome. Yeah. You know, um, you. I, I was just thinking about you were sharing about Ivory Coast and how you kind of, you know, blend with them and were dancing with them. Uh, I can see people, you know, from all walks of life really reacting positively. Now, my question to you is, how, how, what do you say to a Christian who has not gotten to that place of being uh, non-judgmental? Mm, because obviously question. people are coming Beautiful. from everywhere. How, 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 how do you react to People, I mean, you said you were ministering, or some 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 some, some homosexuals were talking to you the other day. And mm -hmm. how, how do you minister to people without being not judgmental and without, I mean, with with love and compassion? Oh, that's probably the best question I've ever been asked. You know, there, whew, praise the Lord. You know, it, it's about love. It's it's being a Christian is being Christ-like. Jesus Christ said, "I am the Father, and the Father is me." That's I'm right. one. Mm -hmm. And in the scriptures it says God is love. That's right. There is no love without God, period. That's right. So if you really know God, you're full of love. Mm -hmm. And it says if you don't love your brother, you don't love me, you're a liar. Mm -hmm. or, you know, if you say that you love me and you don't love your brother, you're a liar, right? So it's just, it's just simple. Being a real Christian means you really submit yourself. You really spend time in quiet with God, you really spend time asking Him to change you and transform you to make Him like you, or like Him, make you like Him. So when you're a real Christian, it's real easy. That's right. I don't know how whether to say it. That's right. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect or whatever, but I've just been so blessed and fortunate to be around real Christians. Mm -hmm. So that's the point. If you want to be a real Christian, you hang around real Christians. If you want to be a real race car driver, hang around real race car drivers. You, right. want to be, you know what I mean? That's you right. are what you hang around. You are what you eat. You are what you do. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're a real Christian, you can be around anybody. I've walked in... Okay, are you ready for this? I've walked in strip clubs. I've walked in... Uh, what was it? What they're called um, uh, swingers clubs? Mm. Because an audiovisual, uh, because I'm an audiovisual engineer, I went into a swingers club to des to talk to them about designing a sound system. Mm. So the Lord let me be an undercover agent into the depths of darkness. I got to see that, you know, during off hours, the chains and the whips and the disgusting perversion. Mm -hmm. But the love of God going into that place got to even share God with the manager of a swingers club. Mm. Because that's where Jesus would be. He'd be wherever the Holy Spirit would send him. That's right. So you can handle anything if you're with, if the Holy Spirit's with you. That's right. But the point is, a lot of people haven't allowed the Lord to change them. Mm -hmm. All the mindsets, the garbage that's been put on you by your parents, your grandparents, your surroundings. So all I can say is let God transform you. I, drew, I was riding the subways today, the trains, the buses, going through maybe what people would call some of the worst areas of, of the cities. That's right. But I need to do that because I need to learn these are God's children and, and get that compassion. So that's all right. I can say is it's just compassion. I can hang with anybody if the Lord gives me the ability. That's right. And that's what he's made, he kind of he has made me to be sensitive, to listen, and to learn languages. I try to learn every language I can wherever I am. When I was in Ivory Coast, I tried to learn a little French, tried to learn some of the cultural dance, the music, and just mm -hmm. let it get on me so that they appreciate when I try to be like them. That's right. You know, it, it shows love. And that's what Jesus would have done. If he went to Jamaica, he'd be learning reggae and, and start praising God in reggae, right? That's right. If he went that's to right. Japan, he'd start praising God 
you know, not sin, not be like the world, mm -hmm. but absorb their their flavor, their their uniqueness. That's right. I don't know how else to say that. Wow, that's awesome. Amazing. That's awesome. I, I think that's something that's missing in, in in many churches today. You know, someone will walk in, maybe an alcoholic walks in, or or, or maybe an homosexual walks in, uh, and they don't know how to react to that or yeah. kick him out. You know, we don't want him here. He has come to corrupt our church or something. Right. 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 Instead of really sharing the love of God and and letting them know that Christ loves them. Yeah. Yes, Christ doesn't want them to remain in their sins, right. but. Right. First of all, love on them first, mm -hmm. and then they, you know, they get to hear the gospel, and then they get you, to come to Christ. You hit a point there, if I may say something. Um, the Lord's taught me how to take, he said, take anger, take frustration, and turn it into intercession. Take anger, turn it into compassion. Mm. You know, when you meet somebody that's wicked, evil, I don't care what they've done, the worst serial killer in the world is still a child of God, possessed by demons but a child of God inside. So your job is to cast the demons out. Mm -hmm. So stop judging and being angry and know the source is Satan. That's right. Hate Satan, not the people. That's, That's right. the difference. That's right. when, you, when you meet somebody who's full of sin, you, 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 you should be crying, not right. angry, not That's judgmental. Right. You should be broken inside, going, God, how can I reach this person who's dying inside? That's right. That's right. Amen? And you know, as a pastor, let, let me quickly say to those that are viewing us, uh, God created everyone. So in, in that sense, we are all children of God. But then now God wants us to, to now become children of God through mm. redemption. Praise God. So that those that are out there, you know, lost in their sins, they're children of God. They're created by God. But now they're lost. They're spiritually dead. And if we will love on them and get to share the gospel with them, then they can mm. become children of God through redemption. And they can make it to heaven you know and, and so it's very important that you share the love of God if you if you reject them because they don't look like you they don't talk like you they don't dress like you and you just throw them out then you never give them the chance of redemption so invite them in embrace them share the love of God with them you know people will not listen to you until they've seen love but when you share the love of God with them, and they see that, wow, you really care, then they want to hear what you have to say. And then now they know that you're not judging them, or you're actually telling them the truth. But if people think that you're going to be judging them, or you're, you're telling them whatever you're telling them because they dress the way they dressed, or because they look the way they look, then they don't want to hear you. So let's get that right, so that we can reach souls for the kingdom. Beautiful. You just said the word redemption, right? Red That's right. You know, we can break it down for simple anybody out there. If you love to restore cars, you're taking a piece of junk and you're redeeming it, That's right. making it valuable. That's right. That's what God's specialty is. He That's likes right. to take what people think is junk. He don't make any junk, but he likes to take the worst, most broken down, destroyed person and make them a, a winner of souls. I've, wow. I've met incredible pastors that were murderers because mm. of their past life. That's but right. God redeemed them. That's the whole point. Paul was a murderer. Yes, yes. Moses yes. was a murderer. That's right. So who do you think you are? Hmm. Amen. I'll Amen. preach it, Pastor. <laughs> well, praise God, praise God, praise God. Now, what else do you do with your time uh, other than acting? What, what else do you do? Oh, boy. You know, that's a, that's a really good question. I love to learn, you know, like I was t telling you about my technology background. Every time... I got, would get a job, I need a job, I would get a job that had something related to do with my future, of my calling. So I'd get a job as a, a sound technician, I'd go work on concerts, go pull cables, go run video camera. You know, I, I, I toured with Reba McIntyre as a video camera operator because I wanted to learn the, the, the excellence of the best of the world okay. so that we could bring it into the church and That's then right. make it better. Because right. the Holy Spirit can make it better. That's right. But we have to learn, we have to humble ourselves and learn from the people who've done things. So I always try to, 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 to educate myself and to try to learn languages, I try to, I try to learn instruments, I try to learn more technology. Um, I, I like to have fun too, I love to surf, I love to skateboard, I love to swim, I love to get out in the sun. I'm a, I'm a tropical boy all the way, for sure. Yes. Um, I love my friends, I love, to, I love film and productions and movies. You know, we have to be careful what we watch, but I, I love, I just, you know, I love to, but I must admit, I love to learn, to make myself better, That's has right. become more enjoyable than just pleasure. 
That's right. That makes sense. It makes sense. God will give you things to let you have fun, but you're also accomplishing something at the same time. At the same to time. To me, fun is going down to Times Square and, and portraying Jesus. That's fun. That's awesome. You know what I mean? That's awesome. Because you're actually accomplishing something for the kingdom of God and having fun at the same time. Yes. Hugging people, smiling, you know, humorous things going on. So, I must admit, I, every chance I get, I just try to, and I do love to dance. I love Latin music. I love to do salsa and merengue, sanctified salsa and merengue. So I like to learn dance. <laughs> I, I, just, I like to break dance. I like to do Michael Jackson. I mean, I like everything. That's right. But, uh, That's you know, right. we can have fun being Christians. Awesome. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, as you can uh, see, we, we can use everything to glorify God. We can use everything to reach out to souls. And you know what? One of the things that, that you said, walking down Times Square, that is taking the church, that is taking the light to where the darkness is. Many times we want to bring the people into the churches, but the reality is that most people are not in church. They are outside of church. And so in 2012, for pastors that are watching, I want to encourage you. Start to go outside of the four walls of the church. Start to take this gospel. Start, start to assign a team that will go to the nursing homes, that will go to the prisons, that will go to the streets, that will go to the high schools, wherever they will allow you to. Uh, to go to places and take the gospel there. I, I've done it for, for many Praise years, God. you know, taking the Obvious. gospel to, you know, <laughs> Salvation Army and, and you know, feeding yeah. the homeless and, and just really going on the streets to the parks and all those different places because they need the, the lights there. Many of them will not come to church, but when you bring it to them, and you know, to close this uh, uh, interview up, I remember an outreach we had in Bushwick, in Brooklyn, and we, we took a whole team. There was a church in Queens, a Spanish church, they brought the entire church, and we went to a park and had an outreach. It was awesome. I preached, my brother sang, they sang, we had some mimes, and then we mm. gave an altar call. People literally came crying. Oh. It's like 10 times as many souls as in the church service. Isn't it? Crying mm. to receive Christ. And right there, you know, it happens to be the, the, the church, the Spanish church that joined with us. They were, you know, spirit-filled church. And, and even the youth know, knew how to minister. Hallelujah. So everybody started laying hands and people started falling out on the, wow. <laughs> on the street in the park. Praise God. It was awesome. Sounds like Jesus. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and souls came to Christ. Amen. Praise God. That well, it's awesome. been great, you know, uh, you know, sharing and, and interviewing Gerald Wallins, and uh, I'm sure that you've learned a thing or two from this interview. And I just want to encourage you, just go implement it. Go and touch the lives of people with the gospel of Christ. Go and show the love of God. Take this gospel to the four, to, you know, outside of the four walls of the church. And as we do that, souls will come to Christ. Thank you for watching.